There are many quests in this realm. Some are fraught with danger. Some require cunning and knowledge. While others, well, a film crew and cast would be good. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Friday Fantasy Show from the Bottled Imp. Exploring the realms of fantasy. My name is Ken Boyter and today we're taking a look at Lost in La Mancha. Now this is directed by Keith Fulton and Louis Pepe, Pepe, I think that's how you pronounce it, Pep or Pepe. And this started out as a making of documentary because they were making a documentary about the making of The Man Who Killed Don Coyote, which was a film that never was. Let's find out more. <laughs> Lost in La Mancha. What is it about? The film, as I say, was the Who Killed Don Coyote, and it was directed by, or supposedly directed by, Terry Gilliam. If that's how you pronounce his name, is it Gilliam or Gillam? I never know. I'm going to say Gilliam. What do you say, Julian? Gilliam. Gilliam. That's what I thought. I was told off years ago that it wasn't that. So I've always been a bit cautious. Anyway, I'm rambling. Pretty much like one of Terry Gilliam's films. And especially when he tried to make The Man Who Killed Don Coyote. Now, he started this project way back in 1998. And, you know, obviously films, they take a while to develop and you do pre-production and you get everything ready and you prepare it and you do all the storyboards and you get the script, obviously, and, you get, and then you cast it and then you get your crew together and it can take a long time just to get to the stage of filming. Well, they went through that process. They managed to do all of that. I think it took them about two years to do that. And then they started filming. And that seems to be where it all fell apart. And as I said, this was meant to be the making of documentary, but it turned out to be an actual documentary about the film that never was. Unfortunately, the film fell apart. So this documentary is really about the struggle and the hardship of actually trying to make a feature film. Any of you that have even tried to make it a short film, you'll know the difficulties, you'll know how much time and effort is required and how much planning that goes into, fe especially feature films. So it was interesting, I was curious about this because obviously Don Coyote's fights of fantasy, fights of imagination, it's very creative, and I absolutely adore Terry Gilliam's films and what he's done. Time Bandits especially, we've done a review of that. Absolutely adore Time Bandits. So let's take a look at where he was back in 98. It wasn't like he was some newbie to all of this, some guy that just thought, you know what, I can make a feature film and let's try and throw it together. No, he was an experienced filmmaker with and I'm going to go through it, seven film titles to his names. They are Monty Python and the Holy Grail, Time Bandits, Brazil, The Adventures of Baron Munchausen, The Fisher King, Twelve Monkeys, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. These are quality films! It's not like he just went, you know what, I think I can make a film. Does anyone else think I, I'll find... No! Brilliant track record. So I was very surprised to see that even somebody as established and well respected and has you know commercial success as well as critical success, not even to say that he'd been in the hit you know comedy troupe the Monty Python. He was a key ingredient to that. He did all the animations. He even acted in some of it as well, and directed the, some of the films. Even he struggled to make a feature film, and that to me is the interesting part of this. You can see all the way through when it starts to grow, the frustration on his little face. You just want to give him a hug. He's like, ah, because he is a very creative guy, he's very imaginative, very talented, and you can see the passion and love. He really adores the story of Don Quixote and what he, he kind of had wanted to adapt it for a long time before that. This was his chance, this was his big dream and, and it kind of led up to, I guess all those other films kind of led up to this because this was probably one of his most ambitious films. I think they had a budget back in the day, it was a big budget, 32.1 million I think it was. And it was going to be completely shot in Europe. I think, I think it was Spain is where they settled to actually film a lot of it. 
and they started production. So you can imagine he's done, he's, he's already read the novel, he already loves the stories, he's already adapted it, he's already got everything up and running, he's got his actors, he's found it. It took him two years just to find the, the perfect actor to, 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 to play Don Coyote, that was uh, Jean Ricard, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, and he took, he, that actor took seven months to learn English for the role. He, did, he couldn't even speak English, but then he could after seven months of training. So this is how much dedication went into it. We've got Johnny Depp on board. You would surely a film with Johnny Depp, and he was a big star back then uh, when he did this film. Surely it couldn't possibly go wrong. Oh yes, it can. S the first day of filming, for example, um, th they're on location in this sort of desert place in Spain. It's looking gorgeous from a, f a film, well, yeah, what's the word? Photography point of view, a cinema, cinem cinematography point of view. It's gorgeous landscape, it's gonna set the film up perfectly. What happens? Fighter planes go overhead. Yeah, they are right next to a NATO military base. These fighter planes, they're not just out once or twice a day, they're there constantly. So of course, all the sound is ruined and they think, well, okay, we can carry on, we can just put in the sound later, we can do it in post, fair enough. Then what happens? Hey, flash floods overnight, flash floods ruins the matchup. So they've done filming that day, the next day they go back, completely changed the look of where they were filming. So they can't carry on filming those scenes. On top of that, the main actor, Jean Ricard, he actually damages his back. He's a very good horse rider, but he damages his back. So he has to fly out to, um, I can't remember where he lived, but anyway, he had to leave the country to go to his doctor to get medical help. They didn't know how long he was gonna be out for. They carried on filming. But that's when it all starts to fall apart. When you cast somebody, especially when you take two years to cast it, and then they have problems, you can just see it all slowly unraveling and it's so painful to watch. It's fascinating as well, but it's very, very painful to watch. So this documentary is a fantastic documentary. I thoroughly recommend it. I loved, I loved it from a, a kind of, I think the Germans have a word, Schroeden, I can't pronounce this, you can imagine. Scheidenfreude. Scheidenfreude, yeah, like something like No, right. but it's like that, which means taking pleasure of the misery of other people. And it's kind of a little bit like that because part of the, the joy of this documentary is then, okay, if it's going to fall apart, let's see how badly it falls apart. Let's see everybody kind of getting miserable and, and angry with each other and snappy. There's other things that happen, I don't want to spoil everything, but there's other things that happen. And in amongst it all is you kind of see Terry kind of not wanting to admit that he's, he's, gonna, ha he's gonna have to give this up. And quite right, why would you want it? You put so much time and effort into it. And so therefore, it, you know, inevitably the film doesn't get made, the cast and crew, they start to disappear because the, the lead actor, it's clear that he can't carry on filming. But Terry, he doesn't give up. Unfortunately, the film goes in, the insurance, you know, he wants to get claim back on insurance for the money that they've put into it. That goes into big legal battles, then the, the insurance company owns the rights to the script. And it then takes another five or six years for that to be resolved. In 2005, he then announces, Terry announces again, yes, we're up and running. We can actually get this project up and running. And then 2000, and then it goes a bit quiet. 2008, he says, "Yes, we're going to start primarily um, the the I can never pronounce this either. Primarily, <laughs> primarily, you know, the the beginnings, the the first principal shooting of a film. Yes, we're going to start that. 2008, they've recast by then, obviously, Robert Duvall as as Don Coyote. Johnny Depp is still on board, but then he sort of decides, well, you know, I've got other films, of Pirate Caribbean films, maybe I can't fit you in, maybe you can. And then fast forward another couple of years, it's 2010, Ewan McGregor is now going to play the part that Johnny Depp was going to play. And again, brilliant, we're going to stop, we're going to do this. 2014, there's still no film. Yes, we're going to still do it. He's spending so much time. In fact, he is quoted. 2015 again, we, we got, we're going to get John Hurt in the lead role and they have started that up again. There's pictures of John Hurt in the costume and unfortunately he, he has pantreatic cancer so he can't actually carry on. They have to recast again. 2016, October 2016, so not that long ago, they announced yes, we're going to do it again. Michael Palin is now on board. 
We are now 2017, early 2017. We don't know if this is going to get made. Terry Gilliam said, a sensible man would have walked away from the project long ago. He said it's 15 years of his life he's tried to make. He's kind of wasted. I desperately, desperately hope he does make Don Quixote because I think it would be a fantastic film when he does make it. He sure deserves to get it made. But it just goes to show, even the best of the best struggle when making films. Thoroughly recommend this documentary. Check it out, that's Lost in La Mancha. <laughs> Lost in La Mancha. <laughs> yes, a lot of fun this one. It, and I, I do feel his pain. I would love him to make the, uh, the uh, Who Killed Don Coyote. As I say, we have done uh, The Time Bandits and also Monty Python and the Holy Grail review. So check those out on our channel. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Until next time, fellow imps, remember to keep it unreal especially if you're making a film.